Are there any questions? All right. Well, today I'm going to review the ionization of hydrogen. And then I'm actually going to do homework problem, the last homework problem in class, because I think that looking at what was turned in, I don't think anybody really did it in sufficient detail. So I'm going to do it in full detail. In fact, I might start with that. I think I will start with this fourth homework problem. It's worth seeing in more detail, in full detail. Thanks for raising the floors. Okay. Well, the electromagnetic field in the cool gauge, and this is the transverse part of the electromagnetic field, in the cool gauge, the longitudinal part is confined to A0, and that is a dependent variable that depends upon the charge and current distributions, charge distributions, actually. Epsilon R of K, A sub R of K, E to the I, K dot X minus omega T. And here I'm thinking about the Hamiltonian and the field with a time dependence that's associated only with the transverse photon. So this is a universe with only transverse photons, no charge anywhere. By the way, this structure here, which we see all the time in electrodynamics and optics, this really was a sign long ago, probably as long ago as the time of Maxwell, that the right ingredient, the right invariant was of this form. But I guess in those days they didn't really realize that K was the momentum of the photon and omega was the energy. So they didn't realize that this was a dot product of two four vectors. But it is. FKR is just an abbreviation that I'm using for the square root of H bar over two epsilon zero V omega K. And so I'm doing this in SI units. Okay. The free Hamiltonian is an integral over space. Epsilon zero over two E of X and T squared plus one over two mu zero E of X and T squared. And remember, this comes from an integral DQ dex of E dot D over two plus P dot H over two. So that's what this comes from. I don't know. There are sort of two points of view of classical electrodynamics. You can think of these macroscopic fields as the fundamental fields, or you can think of the microscopic fields as the fundamental fields. I tend to think of the microscopic fields as the fundamental fields. Anyway, these E and B that appear here 
E here is um, minus A dot and of course B is the plural of A. So, um, as you found when you did the homework problem, these, uh, when you take this expression for the electromagnetic field, create, uh, create the electric and magnetic fields, and then substitute into here, you get a huge mess. And in that mess, you see things that are simple and things that are complicated. And what you want is to have the complicated things cancel. So, so the electric part of the Hamiltonian, which is E cubed x, epsilon 0 over 2 e squared, or since we substitute for E a dot, let's just do that immediately, that's a dot squared. And so this is going to be epsilon 0 over 2 d cubed x. And now it's a sum over k and r, f k r. And now just take carrying out the differentiation here, with respect to time, you get minus i omega k, epsilon r, a sub r of k of cos. If I write everything down, we'll be here all day and all night. By the way, let me just mention something. Uh, this uh, situation with flying swine flu is, according to the media, getting more and more serious. So if any of you feel sick, don't come to class, all right? Stay home um, and tell your friends also. Also, it's a good idea during this uh, outbreak, whatever it is, to uh, wash your hands and soak in water a lot. That's um, one of the ways you can protect yourself from getting uh, sick. And if you uh, happen to be one of the few Americans who has easy access to an actual doctor, uh, ask the doctor for a prescription for Tamiflu. You might want to fill the prescription. Well, I wouldn't say you should fill the prescription, but um, it'd be nice to have a prescription on hand so that you could fill it, assuming the pharmacies don't run out. This is the trade name of uh, Roche's uh, uh, What is that stuff? Tamiflu? Tamiflu. T-A-M-I-F-L-U. It's uh, capsules that it's an anti-flu medication that works against swine flu. It doesn't prevent it and it um, doesn't cure it, but it means instead of being sick for eight days, you're sick for four days, something like that. And instead of being deathly sick, you're just sick. Um, I was going to say something else. Yeah, how many of you had flu shots last fall? Oh, hands have gone up. Not good. Flu, the flu shot of last fall protects someone against swine flu. Uh, I get flu shots every year. Um, I'm going to go on to this board now. A zaga e to the minus i, k dot x minus omega t. Okay, that is dotted into, or, yeah, dotted into uh, the sum k prime r prime, f k prime r prime, uh, minus i omega prime. Epsilon R prime, A sub R prime, E to the I, K prime dot X minus omega prime T plus I omega prime, Epsilon prime star, A prime dot X, E to the minus I, K prime dot X minus omega prime T. Okay, so that's the expression, and it's, it's of course, um, a, uh, one might say in some of the modern slang is a piece of work. 
Anyway, we have E cubed X e to the i k dot x plus i k prime dot x. This is equal to the volume times delta of k minus k prime. And another volume integral is e to the i k dot x minus i k prime dot x is v delta k k prime. So we have these Kronecker delta relations, and these help a lot. But what we get is still a mess, because this is then equal to three terms. Epsilon 0 over 2 sum on k r and r prime minus omega k squared. I'm writing in all these factors of turning f into these h bar things. And that's h bar v over 2 epsilon 0 v omega k. And this is then epsilon r of k dot epsilon r prime of minus k, a sub r of k, a sub r prime of minus k, a sub r prime, that's right, of minus k, e to the minus 2i omega k t. Omega depends just on k squared. So whether the k prime is k to minus k, we get the same omega. OK, so this involves a dot product of epsilon r of k with epsilon r prime of minus k. The second term here is epsilon 0 over 2 sum of k r and r prime minus omega squared h bar over 2 epsilon 0 omega k. Well, in this case, I cancel the v's. And this is epsilon r star of k dot epsilon r prime of minus k star creation operator k r of k, a r prime creation operator of minus k, e to the 2i omega k t. All right, so these are terms that we want to get rid of. And then finally, there's a term that's kind of a nice term that we want to keep, epsilon 0 over 2 sum on k and r omega k h bar over 2 epsilon 0. So here, you see I canceled the omega squared omega. So we just have one omega. I could have canceled the epsilon 0, but we'll do that in the next stage. This is then a sub r of k, a sub r dagger of k plus a sub r dagger of k, a sub r of k. And there's no time dependence at all here, which is a sign of the thing that we want to keep. What I used here to get there is that epsilon 1 of k dot epsilon 2 of k, well, of course, is 0. And in fact, more generally, epsilon r of k dot epsilon r prime of k is delta of r r prime. OK, so that's where we are with the electric field squared. And now if we do the same thing with magnetic field squared, well, it's more complicated. Because you're taking the curl. See, this is the vector part here. And if you're taking the curl of epsilon times that, let me just say this explicitly, del cross of epsilon e to the i k dot x, well, this turns out to be i 
cross epsilon e to the i k dot x. So we're going to use this several times in evaluating the magnetic field. And so that's going to give us a zero f magnetic is 1 over 2 mu zero sum on k r prime h bar over 2 epsilon zero omega k. Now we have k cross epsilon r of k. That's the vector, and that has to be dotted into k cross epsilon r prime of minus k. And this is an a to the bar of k, a to the bar prime of minus k, e to the minus 2 i omega t. So that's one term. Another term is 1 over 2 mu zero sum k r r prime h bar over 2 epsilon zero omega k. And this is now k cross epsilon star of k dotted into k cross epsilon star of minus k, a dagger to the bar of k, a dagger r prime minus k, e to the 2 i omega k t. Okay. And then the last term, the one that actually we want to show somebody, is sum over k r and r prime h bar over 2 epsilon zero omega k, k cross epsilon dot k cross epsilon star. And I might just say r of k r of k. And then this is a to the bar of k, a dagger to the bar of k plus a to the bar of omega k. Okay. So that's the expression. And once again, we want to cancel somehow the complicated terms and keep the simple terms. So this is one of the homework problems that I think was too hard. Okay. At this point, I mean, it's well and good to say, well, obviously all the complicated terms cancel, and they do. But to show it, well, the easy way is to recognize that you don't have to use complex polarization vectors. You can choose to use real polarization vectors. And basically what you're doing is you're saying that a sum of epsilon r, a sub r of k over r, complex. And let me put sort of, all right, is equal to a sum e sub r, e sub r of k, a sub r of k, or maybe I should say a sub s, real. In other words, this structure, sum over the polarizations of the complex ones, is the same thing as the sum over the real ones, and you can choose to use the real ones. Okay, so once you use the real ones, you, of course, have, well, even if you don't use the real ones, you have epsilon r of k dot epsilon r prime of k is equal to zero, and epsilon r of k dot k is equal to zero. And now you also are at liberty to choose how these epsilon, which you call epsilon 1, which you call epsilon 2, and how they're pointing. And so one nice way of doing this is to say this is the vector, say, k hat, that epsilon 1 is in the x direction, and epsilon 2 
is in the y direction. And in fact, I put a hat on k just to make it a unit vector, but we know these epsilon vectors are also unit vectors, so I really should have put hats on them like that. So that's, um, that's one way of choosing these. You don't have to choose them that way, but that is one way. And if you do choose them this way, you notice the k hat dot epsilon one hat is equal to epsilon two hat, and that k hat cross epsilon two is equal to minus epsilon one. Okay. But we have to deal with these minus k's. And so now what you do is you take this triplet here, and uh, let's keep track. Uh, one is my of course, this is the left hand. I hope this works, the left hand. Um, one is, uh, the, is my thumb, two is my big finger, and, 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 and my, my index finger is the, is the vector k. We now go to the minus direction. It looks like that. So one is going this way. So it looks like this. K is going this way, or minus K, if you want. Um, epsilon 1 is sort of this way, and Epsilon 2 is going that way. And what, what I chose to do was to rotate them a little bit more around so that um, Epsilon 1 was going in the x direction, and then epsilon 2 hat is in the minus y direction, and minus k hat is down like that. So that's what it looks like, uh, and over on, in this direction would be minus epsilon 2 hat of minus k, and this is minus k, and this is minus k. So that's, uh, that's what they would look like. And um, any questions about this? This is the part where you're in danger of fracturing your wrist. If you... All right. So now what we have is minus k hat cross epsilon 1 and minus k is uh, epsilon 2 and minus k. Which, by the way, if we now compare this diagram with that diagram, we see that epsilon 2 of minus k is minus epsilon 2 of k. Well, I don't think we need the hats on the epsilons. We know they're in the Minus k hat cross epsilon 2 of minus k. Uh, so that would be this is minus epsilon 1 of minus k. And that is, uh, my, that is the same, that is minus epsilon 1 of k. All right, so we have um, this choice here. I just wanted to make a little more slack in, in the line in case I trip on it. Um, uh, uh, damage the last one. Is there an extra plug in there? Or is that just, just the one? That's just the one. All right. All right. Well, let's look at. I'll be, I'll be done here in just a second. Um. So epsilon 1 of k, let's just look at all the other relations that we need. Epsilon 1 dot epsilon 1 of minus k turns out to be 1. Epsilon 1 of k dot epsilon 2 of minus k is 0. Epsilon 2 of k dot epsilon, uh, epsilon 1 of minus k is 0. And epsilon 2 of k dot epsilon 2 of minus k is minus 1. Okay, um, so these are the relations that we need. Now, if we put
put these, if we use these relations, we see back here for epsilon zero e, we have epsilon r of k dot epsilon r prime of minus k. But we see that by our choice of real polarization vectors, this is zero if r is not equal to r prime. And if r is equal to r prime, it's sometimes one and sometimes minus one. And so what we get, all right, I think I'm clear now. Uh, what we get here is H zero field uh, electric spark is a quarter of sum over k minus H bar omega k, and we get A1 of k, A1 of minus k, minus A2 of k, A2 of minus k, e to the minus 2 on omega t, plus a quarter sum on k, minus H bar omega k, A1 of k, A1 of minus k. Well, these should be daggers. Big time off. Okay, and then the last term, of course, is the term you like, sum on k, h bar omega k, and this one hasn't changed at all, a over k, a over baga, So that's the uh, uh, electric field energy. Let me just get through the water here. Now, for the magnetic field energy, we need to compute what the dot products are of all of these uh, k cross epsilons dotted into minus k cross epsilon of minus k. And so we first work them out. K hat cross epsilon one of K dot K hat cross epsilon one of minus K. Well, this is epsilon two of K dot into minus epsilon two of minus K. And this is epsilon two of K dot epsilon two of K. So this is actually for one. The next one is k hat cross epsilon 1 of k dot k hat cross epsilon 2 of minus k. And this is epsilon 2 of k dot epsilon 1 of minus k. And this is epsilon 2 of k dot epsilon 2 of k. So dot epsilon 1 of k. And then 0. And similarly, k hat cross epsilon 2 of k dot k hat cross epsilon 1 of minus k. Now let me just do this one explicitly because um, I might have gone too fast for the others. So we've got this like k cross epsilon 2 of k is minus epsilon 1. And k cross epsilon one of minus k, k cross epsilon one of minus k is going to be epsilon two of k. In any case, it's zero. Let's see. I, I, in my notes, I have an extra minus sign there. Um, maybe I just write. So this is correct. Um, I just skipped something. Yeah. All right, the last one is k hat cross epsilon two of k dotted into k hat cross epsilon two of minus k, and k hat cross epsilon two of minus epsilon one of 
Okay. And k cross epsilon 2 of minus k is epsilon 1 of k. And so this is equal to minus 1. Okay. So with these relations, we can compute what the, um, what H0FB is. And it is, well, uh, to do that, we're going to use the relation x1, 0, mu 0 is 1 over c squared. That's that magic relation that uh, I guess for most of us uh, was maybe the high point of freshman physics. But anyway, uh, so what we get is c squared over 4 times the sum h bar k squared over omega k. And remember that omega k is equal to kc. So you see, ck is just going to give us an omega k squared. So this just gives us a1 of k, a1 of minus k, minus a2 of k, a2 of minus k. Minus 2i omega kt. And if we take advantage of that relation, we get a quarter sum on k of uh, h bar omega k. And now this is a one dagger of k, a one dagger of minus k, minus a two dagger of k, a two dagger of minus k. E two i omega k, and then finally a quarter of sum on k, h bar omega k, a sub uh, so r k, e small gamma k, e small gamma k, e small r k. Okay, so. Um, By the way, the EU has advised people not to fly to the United States. Okay, well, what you see here is that these unwanted terms uh, cancel. If we look at the annihilation part, we get A1 with a positive sign. When we look over here, we get A1 with a negative sign. We get A2 with a positive sign here, we get A2 with a negative sign there. So the creation operator is the A1, so a positive sign here negative sign there, the A2's are positive there, and negative here. So they all cancel. And so what we get then is the H is simply, or H0F is simply a half sum over K, H bar omega K, H bar, well, let me write them back this. So we get that very nice expression. And remember the commutation relations that we have are a sub r of k, a sub r prime of k prime dagger is delta r r prime delta k k prime. So those uh, commutation relations allow us to rewrite this as a half sum h bar omega k times a sub r dagger of k, a sub r of k uh, plus a half, and of course I screwed up this one here. So that's the standard form of the Hamiltonian that we've been using. And um, uh, this, this part here just counts the number. This is sort of the number operator. Maybe I should write this capital N. N of K and R. This counts the number of photons uh, of momentum K, of wave number K, and polarization R. And uh, then that total number gets multiplied by H bar omega K, which is the energy of each 
control time effect momentum. And then we've got this curious thing that's left over, and um, that is still a, uh, a mystery. Um, and uh, I might mention that if we were doing fermions, we'd get exactly the same expression. We have a sum over k, h bar. Well, this is actually a sum over k and r, I should say, case r. We have a sum over k and r, h bar omega k. We have p sub r dag of k, p sub r of k minus omega. And so the big loaf with supersymmetry, which I don't know how long this whole class is going to be, a millisecond or two years, was that these guys would cancel. It's, it's perhaps not a, totally a hope in vain because um, you can imagine there might be the same number of uh, modes as the same number of boson modes as fermion modes, in which case the, the worst part of this thing cancels because this omega k, of course, is the square root of k squared plus uh, m squared, where m is the mass of the particle, in zero in the case of photons. And um, so as you go to, as you look at the worst part of this divergence, it's, it's, it's the k squared, not the m squared. And so the worst part of the divergence does cancel when you have the same number of fermion modes as boson modes. Now whether that's true or not, for whatever are the fundamental particles, um, nobody knows. Uh, people tend to think that every era that the particles they last discovered are the fundamental particles. This has always proved to be false in history. And um, I don't think there's any real reason to bet that the quarks and leptons are fundamental. They may be, but they may not. And, um, uh, I suppose if you're asking Congress for $10 billion for an accelerator, then it's good to say that these are the fundamental particles. If instead you say this, these are the latest messes that we've found, uh, it's maybe this. All right, well, I think that's that is it. Um, I right, so you know, Xerox two copies of these notes together. Um, all right, if anybody wants an extra copy, I'm done here. All right, are there any questions about this? I think it's worthwhile seeing this at least once in the chat. Um, all right, so we're back to hydrogen. Um, so once again, uh, H0 atomic or H0 matter is uh, P squared over 2m minus E squared over, over 4. What am I saying? E squared over R. And um, if we put this in SI units, this is P squared over the reduced mass M minus, um, let's see, uh, E squared over 4 pi, or Q squared over 4 pi epsilon 0 is E squared. And E squared is alpha H bar C. So this Q squared, I should have called this Q squared. Q 
squared is equal then to 4 pi epsilon 0 alpha h bar c. Oh, but this thing would be q. All right, let's see. I haven't changed from the units here. So this would be q squared over 4 pi epsilon 0 r. And this thing is turned into q squared over twice the reduced mass minus alpha h bar c over r. That's the way it goes. And the final state has a wave function x p, which is e to the i p dot x divided by square root of v for p dot x over h bar. So this is the same thing. e to the i k dot x over square root of v. k is box quantization. We're doing box quantization for the electron as well as for the photons. And v, of course, is not q. So the initial state is the 1, 0, 0 state of hydrogen and then some photon. I should probably use k for the photon and p for the electron in its final state. The final state is p. So we're looking at this transition. And so what we have is p s t 0, 1, 0, 0 k is equal to minus i over h bar and integral 0 t of p e to the i h 0 matter plus h 0 field t prime over h bar. We have the minus q over m a dot p as the interaction. And then e to the minus i h 0 matter plus h 0 field t prime over h bar. And the state 1, 0, 0 k t t prime. So that's the expression. And, of course, we now have our formula actually derived now for the Hamiltonian of the electromagnetic field. And so a, well, a is written down way over there. And so what we have then is i q over h bar m integral 0 t. And this, the final state here is going to be, well, e to, let's just say e to the i e f minus e 1, 0, 0. E f is the energy of the final state electron minus h bar on h k t prime over h bar. So I've gotten all the time factors in. And now we have p a dot p 1, 0, 0 k t t prime. And now you remember in the Coulomb gauge you can put a p on either side. And that p then is just going to pull out this p. So in other words, to do the matrix element, what we have here is a p. We then have a sum. We're just going to use annihilation operators. k r h bar over 2 epsilon 0 v omega k to the 1 half times, and epsilon is 
one R of K, A R of K, E to the I, K dot X minus omega, omega T. Let's see, we've already pulled out that T. So what we have here is a time independent matrix element K dot X and then one zero zero K. And in our box quantization, as we sum here over K, only one term contributes. As we sum over K and R, only one term contributes corresponding to the K and R of the initial state. And so this thing gives us H bar over two epsilon zero V omega K to the one half. And so then we have P. I left out the P. P dot. P operator dot epsilon R of K, E to the I, K dot X, one zero zero. So this is annihilated that photon. This pulls out the P final. So we get this big square root here times P final dot epsilon R of K. And now we have a matrix element. And the matrix element is P, E to the I, K dot X, one zero zero. So this is an atomic matrix element that we can calculate. And we might as well try to do that now. Let me see. Before we do actually compute that, let me use this nice bit of clean blackboard here to remind ourselves of the delta function relation. I always keep forgetting this. So we have limit of sine squared. Let's just say that when we integrate this thing, in fact, let me just do the integral. We get I. Well, the IH bar is going to cancel. So we're going to have just Q over M, this huge square root, P dot epsilon, the matrix element, P, E, D, I, K dot X. Oh, no, that's all right. P, one zero zero. At times this integral, and this integral gives us E, D, I, E final minus E one zero zero minus H bar omega K, T minus one over the energy denominator after canceling, canceling the I over H bar. E, F minus E one zero zero minus H bar omega K. Okay, when we square this thing to get the probability, and then the P of T is Q squared over M squared, H bar over two epsilon zero V omega K times P dot epsilon squared times the matrix element, P, E, D, I, K dot X one zero zero squared. And then we have a four, and then times sine squared of E, F minus E one zero zero minus H bar omega K. T over two divided by the energy denominator. That's H bar omega K squared. And our delta function relation, well, our delta function relation is that this structure here turns into pi T over two H bar delta of E, F minus E one zero zero minus H bar omega K. So, 
the weight then, which is, so in other words, P of T is equal to – well, the 4 goes because we have a 2 here and a 2 there. And so it's Q squared over M squared, H bar over epsilon 0 V omega K, P dot epsilon squared matrix element, P, E dot, K dot X, 1, 0, 0 squared. And then a pi and a T and an H bar. And the H bar cancels that H bar. Okay, so then the transition rate apart from final states is the derivative of this, which is called time scale function, times delta of E final minus E 1, 0, 0 minus H bar omega K. And so then this rate is Q squared or pi Q squared over M squared epsilon 0 V omega K, P dot epsilon squared, P, E dot, K dot X, 1, 0, 0 squared, delta of E F minus E bar, E 1, 0, 0 minus H bar omega K. Okay, so that's our formula for the rate. But we have to sum over initial polarizations, integrate over final states. And when we integrate over final states, we have to sum over momenta, momentum of the electron and over its polarizations, and the two spin possible polarizations. Okay, so what we've got then to calculate this matrix element, P, E dot, K dot X, 1, 0, 0. Now, of course, we made the bidipole approximation. This would be a disaster because we just replaced. It wouldn't actually be a terrible disaster, but it wouldn't be a good approximation. Because K now, instead of being an optical photon of a 1, 2, or 3 MeV, 1, 2, or 3 EV, is a photon of at least 13.6 EV. And it might be 50 EV or 100 EV. And so in that case, this wouldn't be such a good approximation, a bidipole approximation. So we're going to actually do this correctly. And so what we have then is we're going to insert a complete set of states. So we have P, X, E, V, I, K dot X. Remember, this X is really X operator, and so it feeds off this X. And then we have X, 1, 0, 0. So that's our matrix element. And so this is equal to integral D cubed X, E to the minus I, P dot X over H bar over the square root of V. E to the I, K dot X. And then what's left is R, 1, 0 of R over the square root of 4 pi. That's the ground state hydrogen atom wave function. And OK, so in other words, maybe I should write this down separately. X, 1, 0, 0 is what I just wrote down. And the rest of that, if we keep the Z, so this is where we're considering the case. You know, we can do almost exactly the case of 
a nucleus of Z protons and one electron. Not the most realistic case for advanced matter physics. But anyway. Z over A0 to the three halves, A0 being the Bohr radius, E to the minus ZR over A0. So that's our um, uh, hydrogen atom wave function. And so this whole thing then becomes uh, 1 over the square root of 4 pi V, uh, 2 Z over A0 to the 3 halves integral V cube X, um, E to the minus I Q dot X. I'm letting Q equal K minus P. P is the momentum of the electron and um, Oh wait, I've got I've got things in <sighs> let's see. Um, I better call this H by K. But Q B no, it's actually the other way around. I want to get rid of the H bar. So Q is K minus P over H bar. This is the P over H bar. So this is E to the minus I Q dot X minus Z R over A zero. And all right, so that's our integral. And um, of course, doing the angular integration, we get a 2 pi from the d phi integration. Then we integrate um, minus 1 to 1 uh, um, d cosine theta. And so this is then uh, let me just say 4 pi over the square root of 4 pi v. Four pi's um, z over a zero to the three halves. Now we're integrating zero to infinity dr r squared. That's the volume integral. Integral minus one to one. Let me just call it x for cosine theta. Uh, e to the minus i q r x minus Z R over A zero. All right. So that's the that's the uh, integration and um so that so what are we calling this, by the way? We're calling this the matrix on the okay. So what we've got then is P uh, E to the or P E B I K dot uh, X one zero zero then is um I'm gonna write this square root of four pi square root of 4 pi over V, um, Z over A0 to the 3 halves, and then integral 0 to infinity dr r squared e to the minus dr over A0, and times of the result of doing the, the x integration e to the minus iqr minus e to the iqr over minus i q r. And so altogether this is square root of 4 pi over v um, 2 v over a 0 which we have 1 over q integral 0 to infinity d r r Sine QR. So the two came from uh, putting the two down here and uh, making that into a sign. And of 
because e to the minus cr over a zero. Well, this is a nice convergent integral, and so altogether this is giving us two square root of four pi over v uh, z over a zero to the three half one over q, and the rest of it is two q z a zero q over z squared plus q squared or z, a zero squared squared. So that's actually the matrix element. Now we have to put that matrix element into um, our formula over here, which is right here. So let me go over to this board here and erase. Is there, are there any questions or corrections? I mean, I, I've been doing the change of units on the fly. So possibility of a mistake is not zero. Alright, so let's put it together to get um, to get W hat. Then W hat let me put on my glasses so I can W hat then is uh, pi q squared over m squared epsilon zero v omega k p dot epsilon r of k squared then this matrix element, which is, because I should have written that stuff forward, but never mind, I'll put it here. Yes? Uh, yes, but I'm, uh, can you call me in about half an hour? Great, thanks, bye. No idea. Okay, 2 square root of 4 pi over v, z over a 0, and 3 halves, 1 over q, or 1 over q, 2 q is kind of silly. This is also a uh, 2, right, let's, let's clean this up a little bit. 4, the q's cancel, z, a zero q over z squared plus q squared a zero squared squared. All right, I think that's right. Now um, we have to integrate this over the final. Oh, I forgot the delta function. Delta of E final minus E one zero zero minus H bar omega K. And we have to integrate this over the density of final states of the electron and the sum over N, you know, goes to L over two pi Q integral DQ K plus a sum over the polarizations. So this is sum over over R V integral d cubed, and this is d cubed uh, p here, over, well, what is it? d cubed p over p over 2 pi q, 2 pi h bar cubed. So d cubed p over 2 pi h bar cubed. And so we have to integrate this thing over that. Um, so the actual rate then is the integral of this the integral of this 
times V DQP over 2 pi H bar cubed and some little polarization. Okay, well, the integration, what we've got in here is a delta function of E is here, P squared over 2M, so DE is P DP over M, and in terms of K, that's H bar squared K DK over M, and so now that we've translated back into K, well, the trouble is I wanted to keep K as the momentum of the initial photon, so maybe I should stay in this term and not use that, because that K is going to get us confused. So this DQP is equal to, of course, DP, D cosine theta, and then P squared DP, which is then P omega, and P DP is M so it's, right, so we have P squared DP, and so that's P M DE. All right, so that goes into here, and in fact we could stick it in there right away by just saying this is DP, D cosine theta over electron, or better yet, P omega, P M DE final. And now the DE final cancels this delta function, and so the delta function goes away, and we simply have that the momentum of the electron is whatever was left over from the momentum of the photon. And so now we've got this huge quantity here. So why don't you guys help me cancel these things? We've got a sum of the polarizations is just going to give us a two, the polarizations of the electron, because the electron polarization vector didn't appear in any of this. So this is two pi Q squared over M squared epsilon zero. The V's cancel. M squared epsilon zero. Omega K. And then we have P dot epsilon R of K squared. Let's see, we've got also a four. Four square root of four pi. Let me just put that in. Actually, square root of four pi. 
comply with the V because we didn't cancel the V from the square root there. We then have Z over A0 to the 3 halves. Not a Z0, a Z. And then another Z, A0 cubed over Z squared plus Q squared, A0 squared, squared. And then we've got 2 pi H bar cubed there. And then we have a PM. Well, that M cancels this 2 here. All right, well, that's a multiple lot of mathematical foliage there. Let me show you how to deal with the tricky part here. I think the best thing is for me to start from here next time and finish the numerical foliage. But the part that requires a little bit of thought is the P dot epsilon of R. So we have P dot epsilon R of K, and we're squared, or absolute value squared. And we want to average this. Well, remember what I told you about the sum over the photons. This means we sum. This is 1 half the sum over the photon polarizations. So that's 1 half sum over R, P dot epsilon R star, epsilon R, actually it's this way, dot P. And this is to be thought of as a diameter. And so that gives us 1 half, that gives us 1 half P dot, the 3 by 3 identity matrix minus K, K trans, K hat, K hat transpose dot P. So that's what happens to this particular sum. And so that, that is to say P dot epsilon squared, average of initial polarizations then, is 1 half P squared minus P dot K hat squared. And if you think of the, so let's get the angles right. If, let's suppose K hat is in the Z direction. Then this is cosine, this is P cosine squared theta. So this is then 1 half P squared, 1 minus cosine squared theta. So it's all together 1 half P squared sine squared theta. So that's, that's what happens to this. That becomes 1 half P squared sine squared theta. And I think that it's one thing to change the units on the fly. When they get this complicated, I think I'd better just let it go to the beginning of the next hour. But why don't we stop there. Any questions? Thank you. 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 Thank you.